Welcome. My name is Reverend Jim Ernston. And when I sat down to think about what we're gonna talk about today, it became pretty obvious that new beginnings was the way to start this out. So if there's anything I'd like for you to take away from today's lesson, from today's message, it's this, that I am open to the joy of new beginnings. Again, I am open to the joy of new beginnings. And we have that chance today to begin anew. Unity of Central Minnesota and I will be coming together for those new beginnings. And again, when I sat down to think, what was an example of a new beginning for me in my life? it became obvious that the story I was gonna to tell today to help us come together, to help you learn a little bit more about me in my life as well, was that story of the birth of my daughter. My daughter Hannah is still back in Florida, but I had the blessing many years ago to be present at her birth, to be there when she was born and that birth was full of anticipation during that pregnancy, that time ahead of time. There was that preparation of us getting ready for her birth with the, the painting and the decorating of the nursery. There was the, the joining together of, of my friends and community as we held that baby shower and, and that party together. And then, of course, there was the birth in the hospital and that time uh, with her mother and, and just that joy of seeing a life come into this world was, was incredible. And I know that any of the other parents out there will acknowledge this as well, that, that seeing that birth come into the world was was just joyous, and there's no other word I can use, but just pure joy in my life. Then of course we were able to bring that baby home, to incorporate it into our lives as we became a new family, a new beginning for that family. And as parents, we opened our hearts wide. There was that opening of that heart, that feeling for us and we were, we were filled with anticipation and joy as we began that, that new family together, the three of us together. So this is the story of my new beginnings. But let's take a step back. And what does that mean for us as a community, us as a world as well? What are new beginnings? So today we're gonna to talk about three different things. We're gonna talk about one, opening our hearts and feeling that idea of new beginnings. Number two, we're gonna talk about possibilities, seeing those possibilities in front of us at that time of new beginnings. And then three, we're gonna talk about the actions that are required in that time of new beginnings, that moving forward in a time of joy of new beginnings. So let's go ahead and get started. Number one, number one, we're gonna talk about opening our hearts and feeling, feeling that time of a new beginning. So this is the time that we open our hearts with, with anticipation. This is, this is the pure idea of a new beginning. We allow ourselves that gift, and it is a gift, in our heart center to feel deep down that joy within our hearts. This is the time where we, we don't allow ourselves to skip ahead. So we're not focusing on the future and what's available out there in the future because a lot of times skipping ahead and worrying about that future, and that's exactly what it turns into. It turns into worry. It turns into sometimes and many of us can relate to this, it turns into that what if scenario. Well, what if this thing doesn't work out? 
well, what if this other thing happens? What am I going to do? But we, we don't let ourselves get carried down in, on that path of what ifs, of skipping into the future, as well as we don't allow ourselves to get stuck in the past. So we're not looking at the future and we're not getting stuck in the past either. We're not saying things to ourselves as if, well, two years ago when that thing had happened, I wish I'd reacted differently. Or that thing that happened in the past, wow, I really feel guilty about that. Not allowing ourselves to get stuck in the past so we're not worried about the future, we're not stuck in the past and in that guilt of the past, but instead we anchor ourselves, we move into the here and now. We are here in the present moment. This is where our new beginnings start, right here in the present moment, living in the here and now. And by living in the here and now, we're able to feel and experience that pure, that pure joy, that simple enthusiasm that we have right here and now. So again, let me remind you, I am open to the joy of new beginnings. I am open to the joy of new beginnings. So number two, possibilities the possibilities of these new beginnings. So for me, springtime is a time of year that exemplifies this idea of new beginnings. Out there, the roads have cleared. There's no more ice and snow. You can travel easily. There's the warming of the weather. The trees are starting to bud. You can see the greenery beginning out there. There's those first few flowers that are popping up from the ground. There's that color from those flowers. It is a time of promise, a time of opening up, a time of possibilities. That's what springtime means to me. It means that anything is possible. Anything is possible. And I feel that in my heart. And I know that those possibilities are there. In the... Hebrew scriptures in the book of Genesis, the very beginning of the Bible, it starts out with those words, in the beginning, in the beginning, and it talks about the creation story. Let me, uh, let me have a quick aside here. There, did you know that there are two actual creation stories, chapter one and chapter two, but we're not gonna get into that today. One of these days we'll talk about those two different creation stories that we blend together when we recite that creation story. But within the book of Genesis, it says, in the beginning, and then a couple of verses later, it talks about, let there be light. God said, let there be light. So in the beginning and let there be light. So what does that mean? What does that let there be light turn into? What is that meaning within our life? So in the beginning, and then again, let there be light. Well, for me, in my life, in my world, that idea of let there be life is the idea that I can easily see all those possibilities. All those possibilities are laid out before me, and that light lets me see those. All those choices are there, and they're well lit. They're right there in front of me. Nothing is murky. Nothing is dimly lit. God said, let there be light. And I am able to see all those possibilities. All those possibilities are there in front of us with that pure light. With that pure light. And then a few, a few verses later, it says, and it was good. So we have in the beginning, let there be light. Let us have the ability to see those possibilities, knowing that it is good. Again, I am open to the joy of new beginnings. Number three, number three, we're gonna talk about action. That moving forward, that, that moving forward into action with joy. So one morning, when Charles Fillmore was 80-something years old, 
he woke up in the morning and he started writing. The first thing that he wrote in that morning as he was 80 something years old was this quote, I fairly sizzle with zeal, energy, and enthusiasm, eager to do that which ought to be done by me today. Again, remember, 80 something years old. I hope that I'm able to feel those same qualities when I'm that age as well. Sizzle, zeal, energy, enthusiasm, eagerness. These were the qualities that he brought to his new beginning as he started that day. Sizzling with zeal. So, how do we know, how do we know what direction to take? What actions that we jump into when we are moving forward? Well, Charles Fillmore would tell us that we start with prayer and meditation. In other words, we move within, we, move within, we seek guidance. We look to divine guidance for that knowledge of what's our next step to do. But how does that work? What are the nuts and bolts of that process? What are the nuts and bolts of actually moving within? Well, moving within to me means that moving into silence. It means that finding a time that I'm able to do that. In other words, not simply setting aside five minutes before I know I have to run out the door truly setting aside some time so that I can move within, giving myself that 20, 30 minutes of time up for prayer and meditation. So there's that time that I need. There's that space as well. If I'm living with my family, moving into that space of prayer and meditation in the middle of a, a busy living room is probably not the right place to do that. For me, maybe it's moving into the den or moving into the bedroom and closing the door so that I can be by myself for those few minutes. So finding the space that's necessary for that moving within as well. Moving within allows me to quiet my mind. And that's what that is. It gives me that time to focus Normally during my day, I have these thousands of thoughts that travel through my mind every day that just, it's that monkey mind, that, that busyness of my mind that I need to quiet down. It needs to quiet down because I need to quiet down in order to listen. And that's the purpose of that focus, to slow those thoughts down, to create a space in between those thoughts, and in that space, I can listen and I can get in touch with divine presence. In that space, within that space where I'm listening to divine presence, that's where I can hear that wisdom. That wisdom that allows me to know what's my next best step to take. That inspiration to see clearly what is the next thing for me to do. And then to actually take that next step, take that first step. And it's not that I just blindly take that first step. It's that I take that first step, I test it out. Is the ground underneath that step firm? And does it feel right? And can I shift my weight? And then I do the same for that next step. I step out, I test it, it's firm and I move forward. I ask myself, how does it feel? How does it feel to take that next step? And then of course I adjust. If I need to adjust, it's not that I pick one direction to head and I never adjust. It might mean that I take four or five steps. Notice that I need to adjust slightly, a few degrees to the left or right, and then continue my progress that way. So taking those steps out and then adjusting as well. And then being committed to that process, committed that I will take those steps and that I won't hedge my bets, that I'm moving forward with that. This is how we move forward in joy. So again, I am open to the joy 
of new beginnings. So today we talked about opening our hearts and feeling. We talked about those possibilities in our lives and seeing those new beginnings. And then three, we talked about the actions that we take and moving forward in joy as we step forward one step at a time. So I challenge you this week, whatever comes up, feel it with your heart. Enjoy the possibilities that are there. And with those first few steps, moving within and knowing which direction you're headed. And then write me an email. Let me know how that's working for you. I do have a new email here. It's Reverend Jim at Unity Spiritual Center, CM dot org. Let me know how it's going for you. So again, back to my story of, of the birth of my daughter, my daughter, Hannah. That was 28 years ago that that birth happened. Lately, she has finished up her education at the University of North Florida. She's moved into a job that she enjoys. She's working for a company called Made in Space, which actually creates the supplies that NASA and the International Space Station uses. They create these 3D printers and the 3D printer capabilities that allow them to work in zero gravity and yet create up there in space as well. So that's worked out very well. Those, that possibility, that joy that I felt with the birth of my daughter. I am open to the joy of new beginnings. Blessings and namaste.